Bravery is a skill, not a personality trait, and it is the fastest, most powerful skill to creating the career and life you really want. I'm Nicole Trick Steinbach, the International Bravery Coach and your host. I'm a former global senior director in the tech industry who's worked in over 25 countries. I'm now a certified and proven coach serving professional women like you all over the world. My promise is that you will stress less, work less, and then earn more. So let's dive in. You ready for a brave conversation about internalized misogyny and the perception of female leadership? Awesome. Me too. If you have recently been exposed to groups or comments or posts describing a discomfort or an unwillingness to have female leadership, or if you yourself have recently been thinking, maybe because you're on the job market, maybe because you were laid off, maybe because you're in a promotion cycle, thinking, ah, but I would report to a woman. This, this conversation is for you. The data is extremely clear. Female leadership leads to higher rates of, quote, work-life balance. That's what's being tracked. And also a higher profitability. This is true all over the world. It's true in a variety of industries. It's especially true in consumer products and service industries and technology. So if it has been widely reported in places like Forbes, the BBC, Psychology America, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, Exhaf Post, Harvard Business Review, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If this data has been created and confirmed from a variety of different research organizations, academic organizations, and for-profit companies, then why do we continue with the internal monologue or the external dialogue questioning female leaders? My answer implicitly or explicitly is internalized misogyny. But first, let me tell you a little bit, a little story that demonstrates this. I was recently in a one-on-one conversation and the person I was talking to has been on the market for a good time. And they made this flyaway comment about how they would just really rather report to a man. And I said, that's interesting. Why? And the response that I got was something along the lines of, well, I've just never had luck with women, which fascinating coming from a woman. So I said, because this was not a coaching conversation. So I said, you know, can I ask you some more questions about that? You know, because consent is important when we're talking about difficult things. Think about how I started this podcast episode. And I got the consent and I said, I'm really interested you know, you seem a little bit younger than me. I'm in my forties. I'm wondering how many managers you've had. Long story short, this person has had over seven managers. Two have been women, five have been men. Okay. Now those are direct lines. When I asked some more questions, one of the women had been a really supportive manager. And one of the men had also been a really supportive managers. The rest of them were either not much of a cultural fit or the job was kind of assigned in a weird team and it didn't quite make sense functionally, or the person was just an immature 
perhaps even toxic manager. So I asked if you've had seven managers, a little over seven managers, and one was a female who was good and one was a man who was good. Why did you make the comment about wanting a male manager? And now I'm asking you, what have you accepted from a patriarchal, meaning focused on men, misogynistic, meaning hatred of women, set of systems that influences whether you know it or not? Because until you can acknowledge and then begin to deconstruct your internalized misogyny, you are not only holding back your own career, you're holding back the depth of your relationships and your connections, which we all know are very important for career growth and just happiness as a human. You're also holding back All of the other people who self-identify or are identified as women. And the last thing, the last thing we need to do to build our bravery is to hold ourselves and other people back. This has been a very, very brave conversation, and it's just the start of this conversation. So I would love to hear from you. What did I get wrong? What am I missing? And how can I deepen this conversation so that it makes more sense and it's more tangible and more brave for you? In the meantime, brave it up. Before you go, You can deepen and expand what you're experiencing here on the Celebrate Brave podcast by working directly with me through bespoke, results-oriented one-on-one coaching that is rooted in my proven Build Your Brave framework. As of the last client survey completed in Q1 2023, 75% of my clients from the past two years report they reached their unique goal, 100 100% of my clients, yes, 100% report they stress less as a result of working with me. 56% report working less and 43% report earning more. You learn how to spend less time ruminating and stressing yourself out by getting clearer and calmer within a mindset approach that is simple, effective, and specific to you. Then we work together to end the habit of overworking and overproducing by crafting a plan of momentum specific to your goals and strengths. I support you as you execute your plan, including the skills and knowledge necessary to succeed in your own accountability. And finally, you step away from the all too common pattern of under earning and make the shifts towards being well paid in your industry, using the clarity and momentum to ensure you become the woman you want to be at work and in your life for real. Go to tricksteinbach.com to learn more and schedule your free, no obligation consultation. Link in the show notes. You can stress and work less while you earn and live more by building the skill of bravery. Talk soon.